Well, while the world cuts rates, one top fixed income strategist predicts U.S. rates are going substantially lower. Bob Michael is the head of global fixed income at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Bob, welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. You see zero percent on the 10-year yield? That's where we're headed. Mm. I don't headed. see okay. any case for the central banks not continuing to cut rates. They do not have an inflation problem. They potentially have a trade problem which spills over into a global recession. Why not systematically cut rates and try to head off the downturn that's in play now? Can you give us the context of that zero percent scenario in that? I mean, do you see zero percent on the 10 year and you see yield curve inversion for us? Where do you see uh, international rates relative to that zero percent if we hit that in the United States? By the way, what I just heard is 30 percent of the world would love zero because that would be a higher yield than where they're investing right. currently. That's true. <laughs> so we shouldn't poo poo zero as being fictitious. I think what gets us there is no compromise on the trade front, no other fiscal impulse coming through. The manufacturing slowdown spills into the services side. You get a global recession. The central banks have to take rates down. The Fed takes rates down to zero. Just remove funding pressure from the system. Then they're done. And I think the rest of the world comes in and continues to buy U.S. Treasuries. So we'll always be higher on a relative basis in rates, even though we go to zero. I think the Fed would set the floor at zero percent. I don't think they do the experimental negative rates right. that you've seen in Europe and Japan. Whether the rest of the world still comes in and takes you below zero, I don't know. Sure. It seems ridiculous to me that the U.S. is the high yielding government bond out there. If it is genuinely the safe haven, it should have the most buying and bring the yield much lower. So, Bob, is there a point that we, the bond market or investors lose their appetite? I feel like we're just kind of stuffing this goose, getting it ready to make pate or something, and all of a sudden, one day, it's going to lose its appetite. When does that happen? When the central banks tell us that it's going to end. And right now, they're not telling us that. They're telling us they only have a handful of tools. It's to lower rates. It's to expand their balance sheets. Both of those things bring government bond yields down until they get inflation to the, where they want to see it or until they get growth to where they want to see it. So, Bob, usually during a recession, historically, the Fed has about five or six percentage points to play around with. That's historic. That's been in the last couple of recessions that we've seen. And they used every bit of that interest rates. They don't have that now. Do they use the balance sheet? And is that really throwing in the towel, admitting that this whole experiment that we've had since the Great Recession has failed? I don't know how much they're going to use the balance sheet in here. I think if they take rates down to zero, and I would cut every meeting for the next four meetings, take another 100 basis points off the Fed funds rate, see if anything breaks on the fiscal side or the trade side. And then once you get to zero, once you have expanded the balance sheet enough to bring the curve flat to zero, You've done enough. Then somebody else has to step up. You need the administration. You need fiscal policy to come through and help out. Otherwise, you are just going to have a recession. But they've done what they could. What are the ripple effects of, of the U.S. going to zero percent, particularly when it comes to the corporate bond market? Well, it should be great for companies because right. it lowers their funding rate. It should be great for consumers because it will lower mortgage rate. Whether that in and of itself is enough to head off a recession, we don't think so. Look at Germany. If you look at Germany, unemployment has come down uh -huh. from the recession from just over 8 percent to 5 percent. Rates in Germany, the central bank is at minus 4 tenths of a percent. The 10-year is at minus 7 tenths of a percent. So you've got good employment. You've got negative rates, not just low rates. And they just posted minus 3 tenths of a percent GDP. It should be better, but isn't it, is it sort of like a, a chicken and egg scenario in which the Fed is cutting rates because there could be a spillover into the services sector from the manufacturing sector in terms of weakness? Um, and perhaps corporations get weaker. They issue a lot more debt or they have been on a debt issuance binge uh, in the past year, two years or so. And it's more difficult for them in terms of the environment. Well, they've always got debt rolling off so they right. can refinance into into the lower uh, to, to lower cost debt. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps them whether they will continue to borrow. If they don't see aggregate final demand because you're heading into a recession, they're not going to leverage their balance sheet. They're going to be focused on their credit rating.
In the, wor in the world in which the U.S. is at zero percent, Bob, what is, is the economy in recession? Without question. Uh, okay. you, you can't get to zero until you have a recession in the U.S. Otherwise, the Fed won't bring rates down to zero, and you probably won't get the buying coming in from overseas because they'll be worried about a pickup in growth and inflation. But that's key because that implies that even though you think the Fed's going to keep cutting rates, that it's really not going to turn things around for the economy. I don't think so. I don't think at yeah. this point in the cycle, it just feels that the expansion has gone on long enough. You need something on the fiscal side. I don't know that the administration could get something through Congress. I agree with the comments I heard earlier on the trade front. I don't know that you're going to see anything there. Um, so it looks like the Fed will have to do what it can, and then you'll just have to go through a recession. Bob, thank you. Bob thank Michael, you. J.P. Morgan. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, but why should the Fed do what it... I mean, this is where I disagree. I think a recessions are a natural part of the cycle. I think it's an essential part of the cycle. Old companies go away, new companies grow. It's painful, but it's imperative that it happens. We're just trying to prolong the inevitable, and by doing so, you make the inevitable, in my opinion, that much worse. Well, you don't think the Fed should cut? No. Yeah. I, I and, and I'm Thanks, in the minority. Mr. Dudley. I know. Thank you, Mr. Dudley. No, but it, I've, been, I've, been, I've been pretty steadfast <laughs> in it. And there are other people who have come around to that same way of thinking, by the way. I'm not saying I'm right. It's just my opinion. You know what will work in that? Home builders. Lennar, Palti, both up 32% year to date. The home builders should be up on that even before we have a lot of time before we get to that quote unquote recession.